We want to welcome our viewers in Korea and around the globe. I'm Moon Gan Young in Seoul. This is Arirang News coverage of a high-level event at the UN headquarters in New York on the Secretary General's Global Initiative on Education, dubbed Global Education First Initiative, or JEFI. Now, the event held on the sidelines of the United Nations Sustainable Development Summit 2015 celebrates the achievements of JEFI and its partners in advancing the global education agenda. Now, attending this year's high-level event are 2014 Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai, among others, joining the chorus of government, UN agency, education and youth leaders. South Korean President Park Geun-hye is expected to make an appearance at this meeting to pledge Korea's commitment to ensuring education for those in need on the belief that education is a catalyst for realizing each and every one of the 17 ambitious new sustainable development goals adopted by all 193 member states of the United Nations. Now, we are going to dip in and out of the high-level event this is also an important event for Korea, one that shows how far the country's influence has grown on the world stage. Without further ado, let's start to take a look. The Global Education First Initiative 2015, held on September 26th at UN headquarters in New York. Thank you very much for this kind presentation. I was uh, thinking you were speaking about somebody else. But um, uh, Professor Punk, uh, Madam Ban, uh, dear Gordon Brown, uh, Special Envoy of the Secretary General for Education, my dear Malala, our hero uh, for education, for girls' education, uh, it is a great honor to be here with all of you in this United Nations General Assembly where we have just adopted the Millennium Development Goals. I think very soon we will have also President Park, who is joining us, one of the champion countries, a country that hosted the Global Education Forum earlier this year. Four years ago, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, launched the Global Education First Initiative as a call to action, to put human rights and dignity first, to make sure every girl and boy gets to school, learns what they need, including new forms of global citizenship. The Global Education First Initiative has led great strides. I would like to thank all the champion countries for their leadership and all partners for their engagement, notably Her Highness Sheikh Hamoza, who has accompanied us all the way along in this quest. We have champions here today who have brought education to the center of development. Her Excellency, Ms. Park Jen Hee, President of Republic of Korea. Her Excellency, the First Lady, Professor Pang Lyuan, UNESCO Special Envoy for the Advancement of Girls' and Women's Education. Two Nobel Peace Laureates, Malala among them. The Global Education First Initiative has helped shape a new vision of education. Allow me to greet President Park. Now, South Korean President Park Geun-hye is making her way into the meeting, shaking hands with Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai, the Executive Secretary of JEFI, uh, Arena Bokova, greeting President Park, shaking hands with China's First Lady Peng Yuen. She's also the UNESCO Special Envoy for the Advancement of Girls and Women's Education and Pan Sun Tech. The Global Education First Initiative has helped shape a new vision of education as a human right, essential to dignity and empowerment, as a transformational force for inclusion, gender equality and poverty eradication. This initiative has widened the lens away from access to the quality of education, to lifelong learning, to skills, to teaching and content, to education for sustainable development, to global citizenship education. Education stands at the heart of the 2030 Agenda as a comprehensive standalone goal, vital to the sustainability of all development. And this reflects the temp championship of the Global Education First Initiative. The same idea 
inspires the Incheon Declaration, adopted by 160 member states at the World Education <coughs> Forum, hosted by the Republic of Korea in May, with the United Nations family. And allow me once again to express my great gratitude to President Park for her personal commitment to making this Global Education Forum a success. Mesdames et Messieurs, the International Education Community has played an important role in ensuring that a powerful and transformative education agenda established by SDG 4 and other education-related SDG targets is adopted at this UN summit. Now, uh, the Global Education First Initiative is an initiative launched by the UN chief Pan Ki moon himself in 2012 to ensure quality, relevant and transformative education for everyone. And now he often refers to his own experience, his um, own anecdote that he was a child in wartime Korea and that everything he is now, he owes to education, including textbooks donated by the United Nations agencies such as uh, UNESCO and UNICEF. Today, he is represented by his wife, Pan Sun Tech. Educative. L'éducatif passe avant tout. Elle est ce par quoi les sociétés se développent et se construisent ensemble en avenir commun. <coughs> Je vous remercie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Madame Ban Sung Tech, spouse of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Ban Ki moon. Madame Ban is a strong advocate for youth education and women's empowerment through numerous important activities advancing the cause of children's education and welfare. Madam Ban is with us today as the Secretary General's representative and will deliver a message on his behalf. Madam Ban, please, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, Ms. Park geun President of Republic of Korea, Madam Peng Yuan, First Lady of China, Ms. Irina Bokova, Director General of UNESCO, Mr. Gordon Brown, United Nations Special Envoy for Global Education, Ms. Malala Yousafzai, Nobel Peace Prize Laureate, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to be here with you today to deliver a message on behalf of my husband, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. I am pleased to send greetings to all participants at this important Global Education First Initiative event. I thank champion countries teachers, students, parents, business, and United Nations partners, especially UNESCO. You meet at an historic moment. The world has just adopted a new global vision for sustainable, sustainable development. Leaders pledged to finish the job started with the Millennium Development Goals and they recognized that education is essential to building a better world. I was especially moved by the speech of Malala Yousafzai. Her impassioned call for action rang out with a cry for justice, injustice, a justice that resonated for beyond the walls of the General Assembly. Speaking with authority of someone who has survived violence, she declared that education is peace. She called her promise from world leaders 
on behalf of the refugees, the oppressed, the children everywhere who have been denied their rights. Malala's advocacy shows how education is critical to overcoming the major threats facing humanity. SDG 4 aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all people. The Global Education Forced Initiative can help us reach this goal. That will unlock progress across the new agenda. It is a terrible injustice that 59 million children in our world are out of school. A quarter of a billion children are not learning the basics. These children are our future. If we help them learn now, they will help out our world later. All of you understand the transformative power of education. I count on you to continue spreading the message to leaders and peoples. Let us work for education for all people so that they are empowered to create, create a better future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Ban, and I thank the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. I now have the great honor to present to you our keynote speaker, Professor Peng Luyan, First Lady of China, and UNESCO Special Envoy for the Advancement of Girls and Women's Education. We know Professor Peng for her lifelong commitment to women's empowerment and her exemplary work as UNESCO Special Envoy. Earlier this month, I had the pleasure of joining her in Beijing at the high-level dialogue on women's leadership in education that brought together women educators from Asia and Africa to learn and share best practices. The Beijing seminar marked the launch of several projects that are supporting African and Asian countries in accelerating girls and women's education. We are honored to have you here with us today, Professor Peng, and please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Director General Bokova, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join you for this important initiative as the UN marks its 70th anniversary. Education is very close in my heart. My father grew up in a small village in China. In those days, not many villagers could read. So my father opened a night school to teach them how to read. With his help, many people learned to write their own names. With his help, many people learned to read newspapers for the first time. With his, with his help, many women were able to teach their children how to read. As his daughter, I know what education means to the people, especially those without it. After generations of hard work, China has come a long way in education. I myself am a beneficiary of that progress. Otherwise, I would never have become a soprano and a professor of music. I'm following in my father's footsteps by teaching at the China Conservatory of Music to help continue China's success story. I want to thank Director General Bokova and UNESCO for naming me the Special Envoy for Girls and Women's Education. 
I am truly honored to work with the UN and do something for global education. I have visited many schools around the world. I seen firsthand how much more we can do <coughs> on education. Education is about women and girls. It is important for girls to go to school because they will become their children's first teachers someday. But women still account for over half of the world's poor in population and 60% of adults who can read. Education is crucial in addressing such inequalities. In China, the, the Spring Bad Education Program has helped over 3 million girls go back to school. Many of them have finished university education and are doing well at work. Education is about equality. In poor countries and the regions, the number of school dropouts is astonishing. We call for more educational resources to these places. Education is about the young people. Young people are the future. Education is important because it not only gives young people knowledge and skills, but also help them become responsible citizens. As UNESCO Special Envoy and the mother myself, my commitment to education for all will never change. Many years ago, my father made small difference in his village. Together, we can make a big difference in the world. I was once asked about my Chinese dream. I said, I hope all children, especially girls, can have access to good education. This is my Chinese dream. I believe one day, education first will no longer be a dream. It will be a reality enjoyed by every young woman on this planet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Peng Luyan, for this uh, so inspiring statement. I now turn to Ms. Park Jong Hee, President of the Republic of Korea. She is a true champion of education. Under her leadership, the Republic of Korea hosted the World Education Forum in Incheon in May this year. Many of you have attended this forum. I see so many faces here with whom we were together in Incheon. This milestone event for the education community couldn't have asked for a more welcoming host and was framed by the powerful testimony of the Republic of Korea's strong commitment to education as a key instrument to advance human dignity. Your Excellency, it is a great pleasure to have you with us today, so please, you have the floor. Director General Pokova, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday the world community adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The document includes agreed goals that will guide world education for the next 15 years. With that, we have set out on a historic quest to transform our world through education. Indeed, the reason we are here today is to reaffirm the importance of education 
in making our world a better place. We are here to tap into our collective wisdom on the role of education. Since its launch in 2012, the Global Education First Initiative has been striving to raise global awareness about what education can do, and its achievements have been many. Jeffy has highlighted three priorities. Put every child in school, improve the quality of learning, and foster global citizenship. It went on to galvanize international action in pursuit of these goals. I applaud the work that's been done under Jeffy. It has been harnessing the power of education to make life happier and put humanity on track towards a more promising future. And you can continue to count on our unwavering support for Jeffy. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Education Forum was held in Korea's Incheon last May. There, the international community laid out a new roadmap for education toward 2030. Delegates from 167 countries, from international bodies, and experts in the field came together. They took stock of the progress made and the lessons learned as we sought to reach the goals of education for all and the Millennium Development Goals on Education. The agenda and action plans for the next 15 years were also discussed. The conference led to a pledge to increase, increase access to education and make learning more equitable and more inclusive. Commitments also were made to improve the quality of education and expand opportunities for lifelong learning. This consensus would go to play a crucial part in enshrining education-related goals in the SDGs. Korea will build on the outcome of the forum and do even more to translate the new goals into reality. First, we will shore up our support to help transform lives through education. The establishment of a vocational, polytech polytechnic, and high-tech institutes will be supported so as to reinforce higher quality education in developing countries. Scholarships, programs that bring talented students to Korea will also be expanded. In partnership with UNESCO, we will scale up support for projects that transition students in developing, developing countries into advanced ICT-based learning environments. Second, we will help make sure everyone has fair access to quality education. To this end, Korea, Korea will push forward the Better Life for Girls initiative. This aims to tackle gender inequality in learning and help girls in developing countries unlock their full potential. We will send more teachers to countries that need them and exchange our know-how and experience. Third, we will take active part in global efforts to foster global citizenship by working with UNESCO and the UN Acad Academic Impact. We will endeavor to promote global citizenship education. This should help nurture a sense of community that moves us act together to take on global challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, Korea is a vivid testament to all that education can do. 
to how much individual lives can be transformed and how far nations can go. Throughout the centuries, educating their children was the one thing Korean parents never gave up on, however needy their situation. The Korean government has been investing more and more in education, however thin the public purse. The government held back nothing if it serves to cultivate human talent. It was precisely because we were so passionate about education and because we invested in education that the miracle on the Han River took place. If we are truly serious about leveraging education as a force to changing the world and making life <clears throat> happier, then our commitment must be unswervering and our efforts unceasing. Let us take advantage of the 2030 agenda to marshal the strength of all stakeholders and to realize the promise of tomorrow through the power of education. And come what may, let us firmly keep to this commitment and this vision throughout our quest. Korea has long put education first. We will share the lessons learned and observations made. And we will make every effort to become a trusted, trusted international partner. Thank you. Dear President Park, thank you very much for your personal commitment for the strong political will of the Republic of Korea to put education indeed into the heart of the global sustainable development agenda. And to show to the world how the miracle on the Han River, as you just mentioned, came into reality. Now, uh, to sum up President Park's speech, President Park uh, made various commitments and pledges for Korea to take on a leading role in carrying out the Global Education First initiative. She pledged a Korea's part in shoring up efforts to transform lives through education, through the establishment of um, Polytech and high-tech institutes to reinforce higher quality education in developing countries. Scholarship programs to bring talented students to Korea will be expanded, she said. Now, the South Korean leader also vowed to make sure everyone has access to quality education. Korea will push forward the Better Life for Girls initiative to tackle gender inequality in learning and help girls in developing countries unlock their full potential. To that end, Korea will send more teachers to countries in need. President Park also noted that Korea is a vivid testament to all that education can do, how much individual lives can be transformed, how far nations can go. And of course, she concluded her speech by saying that Korea will make every effort to become a trusted international partner. Now let's go back to Conference Room 4 at the UN headquarters in New York, where the Global Education First Initiative 2015 is taking place. Challenges we face are diverse, but they concern us all. We need global solutions, but where do we find them? Education teaches us to read, write, and count. That's important, but is it enough? Because individual actions now have a global impact, we have to change the way we think and act. What if education was transformative? What if education encouraged us to care for our world and for those with whom we share it? What if education taught us about peace, protecting our environment, human rights, respect, cultural diversity, justice? What if education gave us the skills we need to answer the big questions of the day? To find solutions to the interconnected challenges of the 21st century. Global citizenship education. It gives us the keys to a more just, peaceful, 
tolerant, and inclusive world. Our next speaker, Malala Yousafzai, has stirred consciousness and inspired the world by her courage and determination. At 17 years old, she became the youngest ever Nobel Peace Prize laureate, an honor she shared in 2014 with Kailash Satyarthi of India, who is also our distinguished, I hope he comes a bit later, guest today. Malala is a first-class student. Apart from that, she obtained straight A's in her recent exams. I was particularly happy when her father, Mr. Yusuf Sai, sent to me her ace. Nothing else, just a message with ace. And it was just beautiful. And uh, apart from being a first class student, she spent her 18th birthday in Lebanon, where she launched a secondary school for girls affected by the Syrian crisis. She has been working with her family, with her father, and others to firmly establish the Malala Fund committed to empowering girls through education. Please, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Malala. Well, thank you so much to all of you. It's a great opportunity for me to speak here about the very basic human right of children the right to education. And when I gave my speech at the UN on my 16th birthday, and Gordon Brown initiated this campaign, Education First, and I remember by finishing my speech, I said, Edu Education First. And this has been my campaign since then, to ask world leaders that education should be their first and top priority. And now the Sustainable Development Goals, they are written, they are there, 17 goals. And quality education is one of them, which includes both primary and secondary sector. Uh, but now we have to look how these goals are kept and how these promises are kept. And also um, uh, that this is, our, this is our continuous struggle, and it will continue. But I want to ensure that this secondary education means 12 years of quality education. This just does not mean only nine years of education. I do not want girls who are at the age of 15 and 16 to be out of school and they do not get the opportunity to go forward in their life. So to me, 12 years of education is very important and I uh, would continue this uh, campaign to make sure that every child uh, has access to both secondary and primary education. And, um, and also we are hoping that we would be able to reach out to the most deprived and children who, are, who need our support right now. I'm hopeful that we would reach to them first because they need our support right now. They include children who are now suffering because of conflicts, because of wars, including Syrian refugee children who are now in Lebanon, in, in Jordan, uh, which um, Irina Bukova mentioned. I went and we opened a school in Lebanon for the Syrian refugee girls. So they are very important to me, and I'm hopeful that uh, their education would be counted as their top priority in all these decisions that are going to be made in the coming uh, months and years. And we need to save them. We need to save them. We need to reach out to them. And we need to reach out to the poorest children in the world. It is they who need our support. It is they who need, who need the support right now. So it's important that world leaders give full attention to uh, all these issues, and uh, they reach out to these children. And uh, so a few things are very important to me. The, in a very simple way, education is basic human right. But it comes to then quality education, which we want for every child. So I'm hopeful that quality education would be ensured through the sustainable development goals. And also that we, we keep on measuring it. We do not uh, ignore it. We do not uh, just announce it and then do not work on it. So it's important that it is counted and uh, every girl counts. And so we need to make sure that we count each and every girl and each and every boy goes to school. And we also need to ensure safety to children, children who are suffering from conflicts or children in any part of the world. They need safety and they need safe and secure education. So I'm hopeful that um, 
through the commitments of our world leaders. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very interesting because women are in majority on the stage. And uh, so we want women. So we want more and more women to come forward and uh, raise their voice and take active part in this mission that every every child goes to school, but especially that girls uh, girls' education is prioritized and girls need our attention right now. They need our support right now. And if we do not give support to the secondary education especially, then girls, including me, would not be able to go to school. So once again, thank you so much to all of you for listening to me. And I would end my speech with the words which I said yesterday. Education is peace. Education is hope. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Malala, for these uh, very powerful words. Um, I remember uh, during the ceremony of the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in Oslo, uh, you were having a wonderful speech and you said, I'm just a very stubborn girl and I want that every girl goes to school. Well, I think our next speaker is a very stubborn. Thank you and passionate <laughs> and committed truly advocate for education. And um, I would like uh, Gordon to express all the admiration and respect. I think um, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, not only those who are here in this hall, but millions of people, of boys and girls, for your, all your relentless efforts to put every girl and boy in school and particularly to look at the most difficult situations of emergencies. Thank you. Thank you for that, and please Thank you very much. have the floor. It, it, it is uh, my great uh, privilege today to speak alongside five of the greatest women leaders in education. The First Lady of China, and let us remember, China has taken 500 million people out of poverty in 30 years, and now every single child is getting the chance of education. Let us congratulate China on its achievements. And let me say also, it is a pleasure to speak alongside the president of South Korea, because South Korea has moved in 50 years from being a developing country to having one of the most successful education systems, which is showing the world how to deliver education for the future. And it is a particular pleasure for me to speak for the first time to pay tribute in public to Madam Ban Ki-moon for the work that she has done in promoting education behind the scenes and for her speech today. I thank you for your great work for education. And let me thank Irina Bukova too, because she has led the way in converting the Millennium Development Goals into Sustainable Development Goals so that our aim is now every child should be in secondary education as well as primary education. And my friend, uh, Malala, last year Nobel Prize winner, this year Hollywood Oscar winner. Her film about to, be, about to be issued in the next few days. But most of all, she prides herself in being the greatest children's civil rights campaigner for education. And we are proud of what you do, Malala. And you know, I want to also mention a six uh, girl leader. It's a girl I met in Beirut where Malala has also been recently. It was at a refugee center there. And I was talking to girls and boys about what they wanted to do and why they wanted to get to school so avidly when they were being denied education that they should have had. And I asked one of the girls who was probably 12 or 13, maybe 14, and she, and she said she wanted to be an engineer. And I said, why an engineer? And she said, I want to go back and rebuild Syria. And we must give that girl the hope that she can have an education. And there are 30 million, there are 30 million displaced children around the world today. 10 million of them are refugees exiled from their country. Most of them are not receiving a school education. Many of them, unless we act, will never go through a classroom door for all their school age years. And we must give them hope. And you know what is so important to hope? It's the promise that you can plan for the future through going to school. It's the prospect of being able to build a career through getting an education. 
It's the promise that we should make that every child who is a refugee or displaced, no matter the borders, no matter the barriers, has a basic right to education and against public opinion in some places that is denying that, we should say every refugee has that right and we're going to fight for it. And so, so putting education first means, as we have said today, that every single child has the right to education. Putting education first means that we must break through this barrier which denies millions of young people the chance of education in, in refugee context today. And putting education first means that we must, and this is what the Global Commission on Education is now about, and I thank the Norwegian government for setting it up, find the finance so that the words of politicians who say they want to do something about education are turned into reality with the investment we need so that every single child has a decent education. Now, one of my great heroes, in fact, the greatest hero of all, was Nelson Mandela. And I happened to know him uh, for many years before he died. And he came to London, you know, on his 90th birthday uh, to celebrate it by raising money for his next crusade, which was that every child should have education. And they auctioned Nelson Mandela's letter to a child that evening to raise money for it. And all the big actors and all the famous people of the world were there, and they were all bidding against each other. And eventually it came down. Bill Clinton was there, Forbes Whitaker, all the actors. It came down to Elton John versus Oprah Winfrey. And Elton John bid 900,000, huge amount for this. Oprah, 950. Elton went up to a million. And the Oprah went up to 1.1 million. Elton pulled out. She won it. And then she was told she was paying in British pounds and not American dollars. And it was only going to, be, it was going to cost her one and a half million dollars in total. And Nelson Mandela told me that night a great story. That when he was in prison on Robben Island, he had a painting, a facsimile in his prison cell. And it's a painting called Hope by Frederick Watts. And it's a painting of a blindfolded girl trying to play a harp that has a broken string, almost impossible. And the message that that picture sends out, even in the most hopeless situations, there must be hope. And so today, as we face one of the greatest refugee crises, where children are being denied education, we must deliver that hope now. We must make a reality of putting education first. We must deliver the sustainable development goals. And with this great leadership that is now coming from women and girls in education, we must make sure that by 2030, we can come here and say, we have delivered on our promises. That is the task before us. Let's now do it. Thank you very much. What a wonderful message. Thank you very much, Gordon. Um, as I said, you're a stubborn person. And I think you contaminate us also with your engagement, passion, and um, belief, which is very important, belief in what education can do for millions, if not billions, of people uh, in this planet. So, ladies and gentlemen, with this, we have ended our the first segment of our important event dedicated to Education First Initiative. I think once again, we have to thank the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, because it was his initiative, his leadership. He was the first ever Secretary General to put on the global political agenda education with all, I would say, with all the commitment of being raised, born in the Republic of Korea, shown the miracle of what can happen when children are educated, the transformational role for the societies. It's an inspiring example, and I think we can take this example further for the next 15 years when we implement the development, sustainable development goals. Let me thank these incredible leaders around us for their commitment, and thank you all for this first segment. Thank you.
that they could all go to school by 2015. But we broke that promise. Today, 59 million children and 65 million adolescents are still out of school. So, in 2015, we are raising our ambitions. Now we're promising inclusive, equitable and quality primary and secondary education for all by 2030. Just imagine a future where this is a reality. A world where we find the money we need to fund quality education for all children and young people. Where we are able to build the millions more classrooms needed. A world where all our schools are safe and children living in conflict can still go to school. Where schools have good sanitation and water where we train millions more teachers who motivate kids to learn. Where all children can be taught in their mother tongue. Where all our schools are accessible and children with disabilities are supported to learn. A world where there are no school fees or prohibitive costs. Where no one is left behind. That's the world we want. Let's keep our promise. And that is a wrap of the Global Education First Initiative 2015 held on the sidelines of the United Nations Sustainable Development Summit in New York. I'm Moon Ganyang in Seoul. Thank you all for staying with us throughout this coverage.